It's spoiler in time, folks. This is the show where we take all that hard work learning how to watch things on Cord Killers and apply it to watching things and talking about them. This week, we will spoil the Larry Sanders Show, episodes two and three of season five. My name is Asher Kingsley, and where is the love? We'll also talk about episode four of season one of I Know This Much Is True and Warrior Nun season one, episodes three and four. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Heck yeah, and we are joined, as always, by our special guest, Andrew Maine. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, it's me. I'm here. <laughs> Let's start with the Warrior Nun. Warrior Nun episodes three and four of season one. Uh, and these are, hold on, why don't they give me uh, episode numbers here? Ephesians 6, 11 and Ecclesiasticus 26 verses nine through 10. Uh, Ava uh, d- uh, join, joins in. Like she, she finally showed up at the end of the last episode, Brian, and we see her, uh, th- their attempts to indoctrinate her, to confront the fact that she never wanted the halo to be placed inside of her, uh, her saying like, hey man, I just want to, you know, enjoy the fact that I got a second chance of life here. Uh, Giles tries to defend her from some of the criticisms, et cetera. What'd you think? Man, I love B- Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and I'm really glad that we have more Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, it's weird that they're all going out of order and that all the names have changed, but I sure am happy to have Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I thought we may, that might be, I mean, actually, the fact that they named one of the characters JC made me know we weren't losing him, but I thought we might lose the the cast of characters that, around him and the folks that squat. Uh, I like that she is now kind of returned to them uh, in, in Ecclesiasticus in episode four. Uh, they, they, it feels like they're not making much use of, of, of the entire crew though. I like, they could have just had JC, the, the increasingly obviously named JC uh, yes. be the one, right? I, and number one, I have no problem with the obviousness of the name JC. Uh, but, but what I would love by now is, um, some version of of roping them into the gang like like whoa man uh, uh, we were cool with putting the halo in the warrior nun but we didn't sign up for this crazy cast of mystery yeah, yeah. characters like 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 we all know this is where it's headed so it's like like speed speed it up get to that part that's right i would love that i do i do like that that, that they're trying to turn them against her or not against her, but like turn them informant, like help, help them catch Ava, uh, by doing that. I, I also, um, what did you think of, you know, the revelation that, uh, as, as we probably guessed, uh, the sister who takes care of her as an orphan is the one who murdered her. Uh, to be honest, they did us a kindness of getting that plot over with. Like, Mm -hmm. it's like, uh, the last thing I wanted was to see that drawn out. It's like, yep, we get it. She's bad. She thinks she's doing a good thing, uh, given, you know, euthanizing children left and right. Whatever. Let's get it over with. Let's save the kid. Let's get the kid into the Scooby gang. Let's let's assemble the Scooby gang. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's let's move on. Let's move on to the Scooby gang as fast as possible. Um, yeah. This show I, I actually, amazing, well, by the way. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> euthanizing kids all this i'm like this show sounds amazing <laughs> it is it is yeah. amazing it's great i mean i mean it's it's straight up if you enjoyed buffy the vampire slayer you're gonna love the show i mean it's 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 yeah. awesome uh buffy the vampire slayer on the spanish mediterranean coast like it's Sweet. it's gorgeous uh and 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 uh I, there's one more thing i wanted to throw out here uh i i just like that this has all been four episodes of table setting, really, but they've made it fun. They've made it enjoyable through all four episodes by not spending time playing out the the thread too long on who who killed her. Like we got that and took care of it. I like that. It's good. The the closest they've gotten to stretching things too long is when she uh, uh, loops back again and says, "No, but for real, I want to just experience life." Oh, what's this? Red mist? Uh, that's probably a demon. Oh, I feel like it's my job to stop that demon. Ah. And it's like, like we've already been through this. 
hurry up, get get to the part where you become awesome. And well, and she, you know, there was that funny moment where she picks the wrong side. She makes the assumption that it's, you know, it's it's the the girl that's the victim uh, of the guy stalking her, when in fact it's the other way around. It right. was a group of people luring the guy she was uh, down the alley, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Well, any other thoughts on Warrior Nun? Loving it, uh, loving it. The kids are loving it. Uh, I'm loving it. It's uh, it's 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 just the right amount of silly it's uh it's awesome to uh it is funny watching it in the context of having just seen the new pope and the young pope and it's like uh all of those trappings <laughs> is just like like <laughs> <laughs> where, where it's just like man you guys are really playing this silly and then you remember what show you're watching i yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I did like that that is the warrior nun episodes three and four of season one Let's talk about I Know This Much Is True, episode four. Uh, This is where Dominic uh, decides to go back to work uh, before fully recovering from his accident. He's got a broken hand, but he's going to work on the shutters anyway. And then he falls off the roof and uh, half the episode is is him in the hospital, uh, just sort of, you know, having flashbacks and and talking with uh, the people who visit him there, including Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. So uh, this is one I'm, I'm going to increasingly lean on you two gentlemen to tell me what you f- are feeling, because sure. um, it's it's just too close to me. I mean, we, we've talked in the past about how twice I've not been able to finish the episode in time for for the show. I did, I did finish this one. Uh, uh, what do you guys think, uh, Tom? I uh, it, it wasn't until you uh, gave that summary again that I remembered. Oh yeah, he fell off of that roof. That made me think uh, that there was actually like uh, a I don't know some sort of mind trick fake memories thing going on here. But no, he just ends up in the hospital twice. More or less. Yeah. Right. Uh, he has, he runs into the tree at the end of episode three. Right. Uh, and then with the broken hand, he, you know, he has the insurance adjuster come out uh, and, and pushes himself. And that, that's the theme here is, is Dominic takes on everything. He, he's, he's kind of running from his own problems by taking all of the problems on himself. Mm-hmm. And this is an example of, you know, getting his stepdad to drive him because he can't drive himself because of the medication to go pull shutters off a house, uh, a house, which the client walks out and says, uh, don't do that. Uh, it, it's not a good time. Yeah. And Dominic's like, well, I, I can't I mean, drive I'm myself here. away from here. I can't here. go yeah. anywhere I put, else. Yeah. I put myself in the situation where I can't get out of it. So now I have to keep doing it. It's, it's interesting that we keep sort of seeing Dom take the role of not only someone who wants to put, you know, put this, these responsibilities on his shoulders, but thinking he's the best person to do it or the most compatible person to do it. Right. He wants to pull Thomas out of, of the hatch it was it called the hatch uh the out of the mental facility that he's in right now and live with him uh while he's like got a job but but his brother needs to be under like no maybe like we haven't really scratched this yet in the show and maybe that's what's coming up in the next few episodes but hopefully dom recognizes that like his his responsibilities here is not to do everything is and and things may actually be like Thomas might be best in this place. Would, would, would I be wrong in, in, in smelling that like around this time, um, he's, uh, Dominic is so infatuated with taking care of his brother that it's gotten me a little bit suspicious and I'm a little bit scared to find out what's driving him to, to like, no, 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 he's gotta be out of the, the whatever on there. Uh, cause we've already had hints before of like, uh, Oh, looks like I got two cases to work with here. And, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. like, I'd like, it's a, I think that's part of what is making me increasingly uncomfortable with the show. Cause this episode we see Thomas's, uh, the incident that leads to Thomas's first hospitalization, I'm, I believe. And like there is, it, 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 they, it it's it's not really framed up like this is the big pivotal tentpole moment in their relationship it's just a moment it's th- a, yeah it's a moment yeah um i i mm-hmm. also i also think there's probably more to his to his thing with his ex-wife yes uh by the way 
uh, what a cool idea for a bar where you you have phones at everybody's table and you pick them up and talk to each other. Uh, yeah, that was nice. Nice little bit of of, of table setting there. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm with you, Brian, because I'm still not convinced that the appear apparent suicide that he sees that causes him to fall off the roof was was real that it happened it, yeah. right 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 it, it looked to me an awful lot like he was revisiting a memory and mm -hmm. had a moment and and was lost and and maybe needs some work because nobody mentions it when they visit him in the hospital yeah mm -hmm. uh we also uh of course uh find out uh well don't find out but we get the delivery of the manuscript the translated manuscript as lo and behold uh his roommate's uh girlfriend is the woman he hired to translate the manuscript earlier in the series kind of a very lucky coincidence really lucky makes yeah. me makes me again question the reality if he's tripping out on this because like oh it just happens to be her and also she's in like cowboy getup do you remember i i don't know the, mm -hmm. the way he the way that the his roommate in the in the room referred to i mean her. yes I luckily him. but not as lucky as casting rosie o'donnell in her amazing <laughs> role that i continue to love every second <laughs> yeah of. she was fantastic um yeah i kept expecting the roommate to be imaginary and them to say like oh your roommate's in a coma or he's not there yeah. or so, we're bringing you now you're getting the roommate you now you're the yeah yeah uh, uh but yeah uh i mean as far as i know this much as true goes this was a relatively calm episode so we got two more left i mean we did watch him fall off of a roof a very that's hard what to i mean watch. like i mean you know for this for this <laughs> <laughs> uh it at that moment was so graphic and so bare that i had to rewind and watch it again like add a morbid oh, wow. curiosity uh, because it, I couldn't tell if it looked really fake because it was very fast or if that's just the reality of if a body of what fell it looks of, like to fall off of a onto ladder. a yeah, box yeah. truck and then yeah. onto the ground like yeah um <sighs> reminder I this is a very challenging show for me I'm having a very hard time and not enjoying it uh but uh but 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 happy that there are two other people walking this journey with me <laughs> yeah, we do not we are, we are not if you're audio listeners we're not pointing a gun at brian we're not making i i it. understand but, not but a hot decision. you you can recognize that something is beautiful art and 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 insist yeah, yeah. on following through with it and also find it deeply unpleasant and just you know fyi i find this deeply deeply unpleasant all right uh that is episode four of i know this much is true Let's talk about the Larry Sanders show. We've got My Name is Asher Kingsley, uh, where Hank Kingsley gets religion, specifically uh, Judaism, specifically because he wants to date the rabbi. And Where is the Love, uh, which is a television critic giving Larry a bad review, starts a feud when Larry responds on his show. Uh, this, that second one, Where is the Love, feels like a very classic uh, let's, let's take things that actually are happening on late night television and do a version of them. Uh, I, you say things that are happening on late night television in 1996, in 1996, me and Andrew say things that happen in our actual lives, <laughs> like oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> among, Th among other magicians. True, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. mean, it's like, uh, uh, I, I, there have been magicians in my life who have had beef with you know how we've taught stuff on scam school or scam nation or whatever and then at some point it became clear it's like would would you like to be on the show and they're like oh i thought you'd never ask and then everything was great after after that uh i i don't know i i, I liked it quite a bit uh andrew what about you i uh, i liked that there the Larry Sanders stuff, whenever we kind of got how he dealt with criticism, dealt with stuff was funny because sometimes you find out the thing that gets him upset isn't quite what you would think would get him upset. You know, it's more about where the attention's directed. But with the Hank Kingsley episode, um, I just, anytime we go more into his character and him, I just love that. It was what a gift that character was. You know, you know, Larry Sanders, you know that, you know, those parts of the story were always going to be fun, but whenever you got the, the dimension to Hank, the lengths of which, you know, Hank was trying to go to win her over, 
you know, was funny. And then I don't think we got to the resolution yet of that. Uh, uh, I, I, I believe in this episode, she was uh, very politely turning him down. Like, hey. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she she says, I am not interested in you. Thank right. you for your interest. Yeah. Right. Because he ends yeah, up in the so, celebrity uh, uh, synagogue, I believe. Right. He, oh, he, ends yeah. up, he talks about going to the other synagogue where all the other celebrities are, and he's talking to Spielberg and all this stuff. The Reformed Church, yeah. 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 Make it all, make uh, it all kinds of, of connections. I... I don't have much to say about my name is Asher Kingsley. Uh, it, it was, it was a, it, it was a good episode, but I, I, I really have a, having a hard time drawing any uh, like extra thoughts out of it. Other than, like you said, Andrew, I don't have anything to add to that. It, it's a great Hank Kingsley episode because you see King, Hank Kingsley being as Hank Kingsley as he can be. It's, it's one moment. It's one moment. And, and first of all, I, I, I don't know about the Asher part, but uh, it was his last name that he changed. Uh, uh, I don't know, change it to Epstein or whatever, but, uh, but like, you're, you're like, okay, he's had a religious, uh, 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 transformation and then it's, and then the second you see the rabbi, you totally get it. And you're like, yeah, ah, okay. All right. <laughs> Wait. And it's, that's neat because of it. It's not a one episode payoff. Like it pays off later on. And it's like I said about like, uh, Sanders' reaction to the critic and what the critic really wanted, and then we follow kind of the rabbi and what the the sort of thing. Ah, oh, you know, he's like, no, everybody sort of has this. You think this is a thing, but it's really way more ego driven or way more, you know, base than even you think. I, I guess, but I still do, in an endearing way. I do like that it gave a very brief playground to uh, a, a very uh, just rattle off one, two, three, four different belief systems and say. Uh, 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 it, do you know why none of these characters have said what of these one, two, three, four things they are is because that doesn't help the show. And then they play in that playground. And you're like, oh, this is messy and dumb and I hate it. I wish they'd go back to just being all people who worked on the show together. And then that's immediately what you get. Yeah, that's a, that, that, I forgot about that. That is a good subplot uh, where uh, Beverly is like, "Well, wait a minute, I couldn't bring my pastor here," and then and and Artie, you know, in his magical Artie way, had predicted this all along, uh, because uh, whatever Artie's failings as a human are, they don't exist at work for the most part. Uh, also, uh, Sally Field and Sting show up in that episode. Uh, or actually, they're in the "Where's the Love" episode. Sorry. Yeah, the uh, 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 wait, uh, and, and we see we see Larry dating Sally Field. Sally Field. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing I didn't Which expect. It was awesome. No, yeah. that was awesome. That no, was well, and well, and, yeah, he's he's at, on a date with Sally Field when he sees Tom Shales in the restaurant at the very end. Yeah, right. And uh, speaking a little bit uh, to kind of what Andrew said earlier about setting up later things like that. His his conversations with Sally uh, are setting up are setting up bigger arcs uh, in the in the coming seasons, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, talking about well, what you know, I don't do TV anymore. I'm Sally Fields. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Tom Shales uh, only only acting credit. Larry Sanders show. Yeah. Oh wow! I just pulled that up here too. I'm like, that yeah. was neat. That Tom Shales as Tom Shales, <laughs> and Tom Shales as Tom Shales. He did appear on MST3K as himself. Wow! Uh, Very. Selective. Any other thoughts on Larry Sanders show season five episodes two and three? No, the, uh, these were classic, uh, uh, classic Larry, uh, uh, and 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 I mean that. Uh, sometimes I, I I mean that as oh my god, classic Larry. This time I mean it as. Uh, Classic Larry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the things that are notable about these episodes aren't new to our discussions of Larry Sanders show. I think that's where I'm at. Like yeah. it's, it's a lot of the things we like about Larry Sanders show are in these episodes. It was one of the things I, cause I just went and binged all of them was that I w I loved the fact that show even season five, they could find something interesting about the characters and kind of go in a direction. And, and it feel, it didn't feel like you know, some shows season two, season three is just, whatever worked in season one and two and it gets old and we're season five into this and still coming up with neat new angles. I love that. That just why it's still a great show. 
Uh, 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 number one, thank you for reminding me. We're in season five. I can't believe it. Uh, and, and increasingly, uh, Brian is becoming my favorite character. Uh, the assistant to Hank. Uh, he's he's like, uh, 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 I don't know. He's so kind and dialed in and knows all of his foibles and, and such. I, I don't know. Yeah, Scott Thompson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Brilliant. That's the Larry Sanders Show, uh, 502 and 503. My name is Asher Kingsley, and where is the love? That's it for Spoiler in Time. Andrew Main, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. If you want to direct people to find out more about, I don't know, maybe a novel or something, where would they go? Go to Amazon, type in Andrew Main, M-A-Y-N-E, and you can see uh, my books that are available there. I have a new one out called The Girl Beneath the Sea, which is about a woman who's a police diver in South Florida and kind of the adventure that sort of sets her on her path into getting involved in law enforcement. Excellent. Uh, next week, we will be talking about Warrior Nun again, uh, 105 and 106. I know this much is true, episode five and Larry Sanders show episodes four and five of season five. That's it for us. Thank you for supporting us on patreon.com slash cord killers. Uh, you get these episodes a little earlier if you do that and we will spoil you again next time. Also, if you're a patron, stick around for the after talk because we're going to talk about devs. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>